Well, it's Tuesday, and we're still messing around with electrics for model railroads. And in fact, we're still messing around with reversing loops. This week, we're going to be looking at how reversing loops are used in actual track plans and uh, actual operations on a model railroad, because the way you lay your railroad out and the way you're planning to operate your railroad uh, greatly impacts how you're going to set up your reversing loops, where you're going to place your, your gaps in the track and isolated sections, and how you're going to set up your reversing loops. So this is our old friend, the balloon track, the most basic reversing track. And this, of course, is just a basic oval, uh, the classic 4x8 sheet of plywood railroad or even railroad under the Christmas tree, just a simple loop. And there's all sorts of uh, other things you can add to your track plan that keep the track polarity the same that aren't going to short anything out, diverging routes, sidings, that sort of thing. But sometimes we'll add something to that track plan that does create a reversing loop and does short the entire railroad out. Keeping in mind that anytime you add these uh, internal reversing loops, these hidden reversing loops into your track plan, uh, those have to be dealt with electrically and that's true of any two rail railroad, whether it's AC, DC or DCC. The way you would actually operate the railroad would be different between AC, DC, and DCC, but the wiring is going to be exactly the same. And while we're on the subject of operations, the location of these isolated sections and where we cut our gaps into our track or insulate the tracks uh, to create isolated sections, which from here in we're going to be calling reversing blocks, not reversing loops, uh, is going to be different depending on our track plan and particularly on the way we operate our track plan. So let's use this very simple track plan here to illustrate what we're talking about. What we have here is your basic oval with a reversing loop internally, but if we look at it, that's exactly what it is. There's a reversing loop here, exactly the type of reversing loop that we have talked about, it's just built inside of an existing loop railroad. So we could isolate that as our reversing block and then put that on its own separate reversing switch and the rest of the railroad on its reversing switch and then we could operate it uh, the same way we've talked about operating any reverse loop by simply manipulating those switches to make sure the polarity is aligned between uh, the main track and the reversing block at whichever end of the reversing block we're going to be entering from. So, depending on how we want to operate our railroad, we may choose to enter the reversing section here at the uh, straight portion of our switch, continue around the loop to the divergent section of the railroad, and then align our switch points and our polarity. So assuming that our entire train is now in the reversing block, we want to throw the mainline switch to reverse the polarity on the rest of the railroad so that that train can exit the reversing block at the switch here. Then as soon as our entire train has left the reversing block, we can throw the reversing loop switch to align that with the main line, and now our train can travel around the entire loop in the opposite direction with both switches in the down position. Now, not to confuse anyone, my graphic is a little messed up here. At this point, the inside rail is the black rail and the outside rail is the red rail because we have both switches in the down position and our train is going around the loop in the opposite direction even though the reversing switch on our power supply has not been thrown to the opposite direction. Only our reversing loop switches have. Now we have to take a, a bit of a dive into the subject of railroad operations. What we just executed is called a facing point maneuver. We entered the switch with the points facing us. We can only uh, take a diverging route from a switch if we're entering that switch, of course, from the, the side of the switch where the switch points themselves are facing us. 
So now that our train is traveling around this loop in the opposite direction, both switches are facing away from us and therefore we cannot enter the reversing loop again. Therefore, we cannot turn our train around and go back the other way again. Unless, of course, we want to back through our reversing block, which will bring us back to our original direction. And therefore, if we want to turn around again, we can simply enter the switch because we now have a facing point move. So if we wanted to create a track plan where we never had to back through our reversing block, we could come up with a track plan that looks like this where we have facing points uh, no matter which direction we're traveling around the loop. But where in the world would you isolate this to create reversing blocks? So if your normal operation was going to be around the loop, you'd want to isolate the X section in the middle here. Of course, this means your entire train has to be able to fit in this rather short section crossing through the middle. Now, if your normal operation was going to be through the figure eight always, then your isolated section would be these upper and lower straight sections. And that's what you'd want to isolate and use as a reversing block. Now, I'm not actually suggesting that you create this uh, figure eight track plan as your actual layout, although you could. I'm just using it as a way to illustrate the, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here on how critical the way you're going to operate the railroad is uh, in order to determine where you're going to cut your gaps and create your reversing blocks. So this is, I guess, basically my favorite track plan. It's a single track dog bone. You can see why they call it a dog bone but you have a reversing loop at either end and then a single track running up the middle, meaning that you may have trains coming in opposite directions, all meeting head on on your single track. And I think that makes it kind of fun and interesting. So this is the track plan for my old garden railroad that I had years and years ago. There's about 600 feet of track here, but if you look closely, it is uh, a single track dog bone. So up here at Rockwood is the first reversing loop. You'll notice that it also contains a, an inner loop, which is about 100 feet long, so I could just run trains around and around and around in a circle up here, or I can go through the reversing loop and back out onto the main line, heading for the other end of the railroad. So I'd put insulated rail joiners here at this switch, just inside the switch, inside the Y section here, so that that entire loop was uh, an isolated reversing block. So the entire rest of the main line going down to Durango was on its own isolated block, and that includes this switch here at the Y at Rockwood. So the entire Durango area, the loop, the yard, the uh, line up to the mine, everything was on its own reversing block. And this reversing block started here with the main switch into the yard. That switch was part of the main line. And then both tracks out of that switch were isolated. And everything from that point on was the reversing block. So if I had the polarity of the reversing block set to match the main line here on the right side of this switch, the inside part of the loop, the side facing the lawn, then trains could enter and travel down the line into the loop from this side. Now you'll notice that I also have a siding here on this side of the loop so that one train can pass another. And in fact, those trains could be facing in opposite directions because one may be coming into Durango and the other one heading out. Now if I'd had my main switch here entering the yard set to the opposite route, the train would have entered the ladder track here at Durango. The polarity on the reverse loop is the same. It always is going to match the incoming polarity for the main line, whether the trains are going to go to the right or the left. Now, if I want the train to simply go around the loop and back out onto the main line, because I'm just running it continuously around the railroad, 
then the train can travel down either side of the loop depending on the position of this switch but before it crosses back out onto the main line this switch needs to be thrown as well as the polarity on the main line which would cause any other train anywhere on the main line to also suddenly reverse direction so when I was doing continuous operation I had to do that with just one train. Now, of course, I had to have the exact same setup over here at Rockwood so that trains could go around that loop and back out onto the main line. Now, you'll notice that there are a couple of sidings and setouts here on the track. So if I were doing operations with a couple of other people and we had multiple trains out here, keeping in mind that this was entirely just a DC railroad, not DCC, and so we would operate these reversing loops manually. However, I had set up a system for automating these loops, and that will be a future video on how to automate reverse loops. And with the automation in place, I could set a train on the track and it would go around this railroad forever and ever and ever, and I didn't need to throw any switches or do anything. So it might seem like a much more logical approach would be a double track dog bone because essentially what we have here is just a big loop of track so there are no reversing loops here and that's very very simple when you're running trains continuously however it does pose some interesting problems when you want to cross over from one track to the other for a train meet somewhere out on the main line because what we have here is another form of reversing loop problem. And it will have to be dealt with the same way we deal with reversing loops, but in a very unique way because it's out in the middle of the main line here. Anyway, that will be a subject for our next video, as will be a video on how to automate this whole thing so that you can run trains continuously even through reversing sections. Well, I hope this is, is making sense and it's not just getting horribly confusing. We have a few more videos to do on how reverse loops, reverse blocks work within your track plan. And then we're going to be moving on to some fun stuff like lighting with LEDs. And we've even got a couple of collector's addicts coming up. So you don't want to miss any of that. So if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And the easy way to subscribe is with the blue button. Zoom right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring and hopefully even informative. And Karen and I will see you here on Sunday with some of our Sunday stuff. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.